Now that we know what rational expressions are, let's look at multiplying and dividing them. When multiplying, I'm going to use the property that a over b times c over d is equal to ac over bd. So how can we actually go about using this? Our first step is to factor everything. We want to factor all the numerators and all the denominators. We then multiply our numerators and multiply the denominators. So we multiply the top divided by multiply the bottoms. And while doing this, we simplify whenever possible. So this third step can be moved up and down whenever it's possible to simplify. We can go ahead and simplify. Let's look at some examples of multiplying. Here I have my first example. Like I said, the first step is to factor everything. The numerator of the first one will not factor. For the denominator, we can see they have a seven in common. When we pull that out, we're left with x plus five. If I look at my second fraction, I can't factor the denominator. It's as simple as it can be. For the top, I need numbers that multiply to be negative 40 and add to be negative three. And we can get that with negative 8 and positive 5. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3, and negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. I'm then going to go ahead and simplify. I have an x minus 8 on the top and the bottom. I also have an x plus 5 on the top and the bottom. On the top, I'm left with an x plus 7. And on the bottom, I'm just left with a 7. And now this is as simple as possible. Here's my next example. This is gonna require a little more factoring, but we can figure it out. The first one, we know the only things that multiply to be two are two and one. So we're gonna have a two X and an X. We might not know on the denominator since four could be a two times two or four times one. So for now, I'm just gonna draw two blanks there. Same thing on the right-hand side. We know we're going to have a two and a one since two times one is the only thing that multiplies to be two. And the bottom, we can set up like this. So we still have a lot of factoring to do, but we can start getting an idea of what this looks like. I'm gonna start with the denominator on the second fraction, mainly because the coefficient of x squared is just one and this tends to be a little bit easier. The only thing that multiplies to be five is one and five. And one plus five is six, so that works. Next, I'm gonna look at this one, the top of the second one. The only thing that multiplies to be one is one and one. However, we need to multiply it to be negative one, so one of these needs to be negative and one needs to be positive. This x comes from adding my outside and my inside term, so two x times one and one times x, so I have a two and a one that needs to add to be positive one. So I'm gonna want a plus two and a minus one. So that'll make this work out nicely whenever I try to foil it back out. These other two are a little bit tricky. We can see that this has a three, so it's probably gonna be a three and a one, since that's the only thing that multiplies to be three. The fact that it needs to add to be negative eight tells me it's a minus three and a minus one. We can try a few different things. If I try doing a four X and an X, if I double check this, my outside terms would be minus four X and inside would be minus three X, but negative four minus three is not negative eight. So that one's not going to work. Well, the other thing that multiplies to be four is two and two, would that work? Now my outside terms give me negative two, my inside gives me negative six x, and negative two minus six is negative eight. So this one works out nicely. The 15 one might be a little bit harder. We do know that 15 is three times five. So we can try putting a three here and a five here and seeing if it works out. Two times five is 10, and three times one is three. And if we do positive 10 and negative three, that would add to give me positive seven. I can now start canceling. I have two X minus threes on the top and bottom. I have X plus fives on the top and bottom, X plus ones, 
as well as 2x minus 1s. So in this case, everything canceled, which means I'm just left with 1. Here's my next example. As I factor, I notice that the top of the first fraction, well, those have an 8x in common. When I remove that, I'm left with x minus 3. The denominator of that first fraction, those have a 16x squared in common. And then I'm left with, once again, x minus 3. If I look at the right-hand side, 40x cubed and 56x squared, well, those have an 8x squared in common. When I remove that, I'm left with 5x plus 7. The denominator here is going to be a lot trickier. If we use the AC method that I talked about previously, I have 5 times negative 70, which would be minus 350, and there are a lot of different things that multiply to give me minus 350. However, I'm going to use some context clues. First off, we know the 5, the only thing that multiplies to be that is 5 and 1. The fact that we already see a 5x plus 7 tells us that might be a good place to start. It's not guaranteed, but let's check it and see if it works. I need my last terms to multiply to be minus 70, so if one of them is plus 7, the other one needs to be minus 10. And like I said, we're not guaranteed that this works, but let's check it. Foiling out gives me 5x times x, that's my 5x squared. My outside term is 5x times negative 10, so that's a minus 50x. Inside is 7 times x, so that's a plus 7x. And we can see that these combine to give me the minus 43x. And then 7 times negative 10 is negative 70, so this does work out nicely. I then see an x minus 3 on the top and bottom, a 5x plus 7. We also have this x squared on the top and bottom. Once we've done all of that, we see we have a 64x on the top, and the bottom has a 16 over x times x minus 10. And we might realize that this 64 over 16 is just 4. So this is 4x over x minus 10.